be joining us now exclusively is Alec Murdoch's attorney, Dick Carputlian. Dick, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. So, Dick, you've prosecuted serial killers, university presidents. You've represented uh, some, some characters over the year. You have to admit, this is, this is a pretty unbelievable story. Your client claiming that he paid someone to shoot him to collect $10 million in insurance money and the guy missed? Is that the story? Well, let me, let me elaborate. Um, on Monday, Jim Griffin and I, Alex's attorneys, traveled to an out-of-state detox facility where uh, we actually had the first conversation we've ever had with him when he wasn't on opioids or oxy. Um, and as a result of that, he clearly uh, knew what he had done was wrong and explained to us a couple of things. One, uh, the murder of, of his son and wife uh, 90 days ago uh, took a tremendous uh, toll on him. His father died of cancer that same week. Uh, most people couldn't get through that. He got through it uh, with the use of opioids. And um, then uh, last week, uh, a week ago, actually, uh, he, uh, it was uncovered that he had uh, perhaps, well, not perhaps, he had uh, converted uh, some client and, and law firm money to his own use to, and again, spent most of that on opioids. Um, and on that Saturday morning, um, he was uh, trying to get off the opioids. Uh, he was uh, not taking any of them, was in a massive depression, realized that things were going to get very, very, very bad, um, and he decided to end his life. He believed that $10 million policy had a suicide exclusion. Suicide exclusions are only good for two years, and he didn't realize that. So he arranged to have this guy shoot him. Now, what's amazing about this, this guy is somebody that was providing, and, and, and by the way, Alex is to totally cooperated with SLED. We called SLED. They didn't call us. Um, and gave them the whole statement, indicated he called this guy um, who met him on the side of the road, agreed to shoot him in the head, um, and uh, this fake uh, car breakdown. Uh, 30 minutes later, this guy shooting him in the head. Didn't try to persuade him not to do it. Didn't hesitate at all. Um, and uh, he did. There was an entrance and exit wound. It was, uh, yeah. and, and Alec indicated he, he collapsed. Uh, he was blind for a while uh, before he was taken to the hospital. So it was an attempt on his part to do something to protect his child. He, this is, he, he didn't want law enforcement spending more time on this fake crime okay. instead of focusing on solving uh, the murders of, of Maggie and Paul. Okay, so let's talk about Maggie and Paul here, Dick, because your, your client lied about the circumstances under which he was shot. It, it, it wouldn't be a stretch for folks to think that he probably also lied about the circumstances under which his wife and son were shot. Well, that, that uh, and I, look, I've spent the last year and a half with Maggie and Paul and Alec. I represented Paul on the boat case, um, met with them dozens of times, uh, they were very affectionate. They, they Maggie and Paul uh, and Alec all together, uh, Paul and, I mean, Maggie and Alec holding hands. He is totally distraught. I've, we talked to him at length about it this week. Uh, clearly, he is distraught about their death. But, but he did, he, did Dick, not did he, murder Dick, them. Did, so, Dick, he didn't murder them. Does he perhaps know who did and why? I don't think he does. I don't think he does. But, but Jim Griffin and I are working on and investigating uh, an individual or individuals we believe may, may have, uh, have some culpability or had did, uh, done it. And we're in the process of doing that. We're not SWED. We're not law enforcement. We don't have their tools. But we think uh, we'll know this week whether, whether the one suspect we're looking at bears fur further scrutiny. And we'll make that information available to law enforcement. And what would but, the, what would the I, motive I, have been? I'm sorry? What would the motive be? I'm sorry, you're breaking up a little bit. What, what would the motive be, Dick? Um, well, that would reveal who that person is, but it's personal. Uh, I mean, the, the motive would be personal. These reports that your client stole millions of dollars from, from the law firm, did he use all of that money to buy drugs, or did he use some of the millions for, for other things? The vast majority of it, as I understand it, was used to buy drugs. That's a lot and... of Dick, that's a lot of oxy. Well, 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 okay, so let me, uh, it is, I mean, um, but, but, but in his interview that we made him available for on Monday with SLED on the phone from the detox center, he explained he wrote checks for most of this. This is not, I mean, and gave them the bank accounts, totally cooperated um, and, and told them how to find out how much he spent, where it went, where the bank accounts were, what went in, what came out, and what was spent, uh, checks written to drug dealers.
Do you fully expect that your client is, is going to be arrested in, in the near future? Yes. I think he will be charged. Um, I think that what we, but what he doesn't want and we don't want is an, uh, an effort to, uh, to deal with these issues, distracting from and using law enforcement resources that could be used to solve the murders of Maggie and Paul. And again, to be clear, there's no connection between that shooting on the side of the road that he faked and the killing of his wife and son. None whatsoever, except he was in a dark, dark, dark place and wanted to help his son in any way he could, the remaining son, Buster, um, in any way he could, and he thought this was the only way he could leave him with anything. Alec Murdoch's uh, attorney, Dick Carpotlian, with us this morning. Dick, thank you. Thanks for your time, sir. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.